Welcome back. Segment number two on the way. I'm Jennifer Piero, your blog podcaster here in the Highland Lakes with our Deluvia to the Voice of the Land of Yellow Jackets. Art and I finished up segment one talking about the Lando Yellow Jackets and their big road win at San Antonio Cold. And then we also previewed the Luling game on Friday night. That's the homecoming game for the Yellow Jackets. In this segment, we're going to stay in 11-man football, but we're going to talk about the Barnett, and Barnett Bulldogs and the Marble Falls Mustangs. And we're going to start with the Bulldogs, Art, because they won what seemed to be an improbable win Three timeouts left, less than two minutes. They had just had a turnover on downs against Early. All Early had to do, a couple of first downs, and force the Bulldogs to use their timeouts. But they ended up scoring. So they scored, and they took a six-point lead uh, and left the Bulldogs with two timeouts and 93 seconds to work with. So what happened there is... Tanner O'Hare, who's the quarterback, found Grant Jones for a 50-something yard pass. I want to say it was 55 yards. I think that's right. He gets down there, and then Dash didn't scores in the final seconds, scores a touchdown. But Ryan Wood, to his credit, decides to go for the win. So he calls for a two-point pass. Tanner O'Hare finds Grant Jones for the victory. And then I think there are a few seconds left, and Early just couldn't do anything. The, the Bulldog defense held there. But what was interesting about that is it seemed like the reporters who were there, once Early got the ball with around two minutes left, everybody stopped reporting. So I had to get the rest of the story from other people because I was covering the Mustangs that night in Fredericksburg. I'm going to say this about Barnett, but you you have watched the Bulldogs play four quarters because you saw them against Lano. I saw them in week one, the tail end of that game where they had to hold on for dear life for a win. They've now won two games in a row. They're three and two in the bye now. Barnett is winning the way that I think they thought they would win and how I thought Marble Falls would be winning and Marble Falls is not. So you've covered sports a long time. To gut out a win like that, what does it say about a team? What does that tell you as a casual sports fan? The one of early, 49-48. Or was it? it was yeah, 49-48 was a final. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, the guts uh, to go for two, I really admire that. And early must have a fine team to play burn it that close. So that's a real good win for the Bulldogs, and I congratulate them for sure. You you saw Barnett at play Lano in week two. What were your initial thoughts then? And have they been confirmed now five games later? You know, now that they've played five complete games in their pre district schedule. I thought they were a fine team against Lano. I think that game was evenly matched. It was as close as 23 to 21. Then Lano scored, uh, and the final was 29 to 21. But uh, Burnett uh, will always impress me uh, playing against Lano uh, until uh, 48 minutes uh, has been run off the clock, and the Jackets can claim a rare win. Yeah. So you know that I'm never going to say too much uh, inferior about Burnett, and I wish them well uh, in the district, and I wish Marble Falls. Uh, well, and that it rebounds from uh, its showing against Fredericksburg. Yeah, Marble Falls is an interesting situation. You can find these stories on TexasChalkTalk.com. That's where we have the write-ups for the Barnett County football teams and then all sports news for that matter locally. Marble Falls ended up losing to Fredericksburg 23 to nothing. Jesse Leha, who is the outstanding senior running back for Fredericksburg, I had him down for 24 rushes for 241 yards. My gracious. And a couple of touchdowns. Um, at halftime, I had him down for 14 rushes for 183 yards. That, no. that offensive line, they – it was homecoming night. Fredericksburg played very well in front of – a really 
strong home, home crowd took advantage of that. Marble Falls showed up with some issues on roster. They didn't have all of the players that they were expected to have. There are some things that are happening internally. I'm not sure officially what is going on, so I would hate to report something that I am not sure about. I will say that the buy could not have come at a better time for Marble Falls at two and three for the season. And that's because when I asked Brian Herman, the head coach, what do you think moving forward? Because there, there's no doubt about this. There were Marble Falls players playing in positions that they had never played before. That's a fact, okay? There, there's no doubt about that. I saw that with my own eyes. I can tell you that that is a fact. All right. So with that said, depending on player availability, and at that time, Herman did not know moving forward who was going to be available for the district opener at Canyon Lake on October 7th. They have two weeks to figure that out, two weeks to train up, coach up, whoever is left on that roster, and they'll see. Now, I have always said and continue to maintain that Davenport and Canyon Lake, to me, are the two teams that will take a playoff. They'll take the two playoff spots, two of the four. So whether or not Marble Falls wins or loses against Canyon Lake, in my mind, doesn't determine their fate. To me, Marble Falls' fate is going to come down to Lampasas at home, Barnett at home, they've got to go to Taylor, and they've got to go to Davenport. So the bye week for the Marble Falls Mustangs comes at the right time. Have you, in your years of being a sports reporter, do you, have you, can you think of a time that you can compare what Marble Falls and Brian Herman is experiencing? I, I have sympathy for him, for sure. You know, when you, you've won as much as Lano has been winning the last several years, that uh, and there are uh, other teams in the area which you would like to see win, and they are not, then that is uh, too bad. I was really stunned by the score from Fredericksburg, not knowing what some of the uh, was going on internally. So hopefully they can get that straightened out and rebound in plenty of time for district. The, as you said, the bye week comes at a good time and a pull off coming in uh, a third and fourth if, as you say, Canyon Lake and Davenport are the favorites to be 1-2 one, two, or 2-1. Two, yeah, I, I, that is my opinion, and we'll see. I don't, just looking at the district competition, there are no shoe-ins, meaning there's a lot of parity. Everybody seems to have either two or three wins and two or three losses. There's not one team that I have seen that hasn't experienced because uh, I think maybe a couple of teams have winning records, and everybody else, I believe, has at least two wins. So in that sense, it seems that they have a lot in common. Where I'll be curious to see, there's a reason why the movie The Blind Side is so invaluable to people like me, because it's a... The blind side is all about the left tackle and an and a lineman. And you and I both know that a lot of times when we say a lineman's name minus Lano, it's because they've missed a block. They've given up a sack. So typically there, there's a – usually when we say, say a lineman's name, it's because something bad has happened. Something has gone wrong. She spots those better than I do because I can never tell really what the linemen are doing until Lance Center tells me on the broadcast what has just happened. Sure. Or if Jennifer were there, she could tell me. But go ahead. So I guess what I'm saying is if you have to move some players around to positions they don't know how to play, they haven't been groomed to play, and then it's positions that are not 
spotlight positions. Everybody wants to play quarterback, right? Everybody seems to want to be a receiver. Skill positions. Yes, but not everybody embraces being a lineman on either side of the ball. Not everybody embraces being the long snapper. So that, that to me, um, that to me is what will be fascinating to see who Marvel Falls has left, who has been moved to what position, and if those players embrace playing that position to give the Mustangs a chance to be successful. But again, in my mind, whether they beat Canyon Lake or not, it really, that game to me is irrelevant because I didn't, I just felt like Canyon Lake was going to be one of the top two teams anyway. And uh, looking at it as we do from uh, so many uh, statistical avenues, that if you're going to lose, it's better to lose to the top teams. Yes. And you mentioned those two than to drop a game to like Taylor or Lampasas or Burnett. Yes. Yeah. Because I, in my mind, those were the three teams that Marble Falls had the best chance to beat. So, district wide by for District 13 4A Division 1, Burnett, Lampasas, Taylor, Davenport, Canyon Lake, and Marble Falls all on a bye. We're going to close this segment out. We're going to come back in segment three and talk some six man football. Both Faith Academy and Smoking for Jesus lost on Friday. Let's go over that and we'll look ahead to this week's matchups. I'm Jennifer Fierro, your broad podcaster here in the Highland Lakes with Art Delugans, the voice of the Lando Yellow Jackets. Please make sure you stay with us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel.